Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Nigeria clearing obstacles to investment, says President. Cement manufacturers declare 710 billionaire profits. Africa's economy surged despite inflation spike, says Africa Development Bank. Importers get 90-day window to pay duties on vehicles. ICPC quizzes ex-government officials over missing $3.4 billion IMF loan. FAB raises 50 acres of palm trees. Pineapples. What the 150, um, 150 million in yeah, Australia? You are scared, right? Ah. Mm -hmm. Two policemen beaten to death <laughs> and food looted in Abuja warehouse. Yeah, I have the pineapple story since you're scared. It's not the one that you're scared of. Ah. But this is also a sad story for the owner. So they said uh, about 50 acres of palm trees and pineapple worth 150 million were destroyed by an inferno, a royal farm in Akiridulu village uh, in Oshun State. And they said the founder of the farm, Rufus Jegede, uh, made the disclosure at the news conference that was held at the farm yesterday. And he said the incident occurred on Friday. He said he started the farm comprising palm oil production, animal husbandry, and other arable cropping in 2015 after his retirement. Mm. And according to him, he had been contributing his quota to ensuring food security in the country. He said they had created employment to over uh, 40 <coughs> workers um, because they understood that the government alone would not be able to bear the burden and so to try as much as possible to reduce unemployment in the country and before the farm got to this stage they had been planting lots of things uh, taking them to the market which is also helping to reduce insufficiency in Nigeria and before the incident they said a minimum of 50 cakes of palm oil were produced per week while about 500 tons of pineapples were being harvested annually before this unfortunate incident I just mm. hope that the farm is insured and um, yeah well-meaning Nigerians will be able to help and see what they can do for him. Okay, which other story, Nisha? Nation? Um, was in Qatar, <coughs> was with um, his team, and uh, they're mm -hmm. looking to bring in foreign direct investment from Qatar. They are reassuring, he reassured the Qatari government that they are going to remove every clog in the way for investments. He says <coughs> this is one of the best places to invest and is the best for returns on investment. In his words, he said, I'm here to assure you that the reforms are going on and forget whatever you have heard in the past. And um, they signed a lot of um, agreement on education, mines and steels and minerals. Mm. And we are looking to the gains. Yeah. Um, Qataris are outstanding when it comes to agreements. I don't expect them to be like some countries when they come here to invest in the way that they would treat the land and the people. Mm. I'm hoping that this one works out. Mm. Okay. I have um, Africa's economy surge despite inflation. So um, the president of the African Development Bank Group, uh, Dr. Kiwumi Adishino, they said this week during the bank's annual luncheon for ambassadors and heads of diplomatic missions as well as representatives of international organizations. They had this in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. And he said that despite um, several challenges, including <coughs> rising inflation, climate change, geopolitical tensions, food insecurity, and rising debt, Africa's economies have continued to grow faster than the global average of 3% demonstrating resilience. So um, he said that it is forecast that Africa will, continue, will account for 11 out of the 20 fastest growing economies in the world in 2024, and adding that 15 African countries have posted output expansions of more than 5%. Uh, we also, you know, they gave breakdown for Nigeria, Kenya, and Ghana, and it looks like, you know, the Nigerian GDP, GDP grew by 3.6% year on year. Um, uh, the economic growth in Ghana, on the other hand, has slowed down and they're saying that they're really grappling with worse economic crisis, you know, for a long time. Their steady currency is, has gone weaker and, you know, and there's so many other things, you know, and Kenya seems uh, economy has grown by 5.9%, you know, and many other, uh, these are the three countries that were highlighted. <coughs> and I mentioned them really because, you know, sometimes when, you know, we're talking about our country, I hear us constantly comparing to Ghana and saying, oh, we're worse than Ghana is, 
you know, it, it's important that we do better, but also be aware that there's a... Uh, gains. You know, it's affecting everyone, and even the Ghana is going through some yeah. issues right now. But that does not mean that we should not keep working and making our um, economic yeah. indices better. So, yeah. So, cement, uh, uh, the report here is that the Nigeria's three big guys, that's um, Dangote Cement, uh, Lafarge, and Boa Cement, um, a report recorded over 710 billion naira profit in 2023 a significant upsurge in sales and considerably higher prices lessened pressures on operations um, according to the report by um by the nation say total sales by the companies rose from over two trillion naira to 3.076 trillion naira uh, many had um, <clears throat> applauded the federal government who had threatened to break the monopoly being enjoyed by these three big guys, the domestic manufacturers, by allowing importation of cement, saying this is significantly cheaper in neighboring companies. So what exactly is your problem in making it quite expensive? So um, the minister had threatened to um, open the borders for uh, importation of cement just to get them to reduce the price because it skyrocketed from about 3,500 to about 13,000. Say, mm -hmm. what exactly were the indices you used in getting this kind of um, upsurge? However, quite a number of people have applauded the, the, the government for this, and we're hoping that we should see some significant changes in the coming weeks based on the directive by the federal government. Moving on now to the punch. Tight security at, um, at NEMA stores as hoodlums loot FCT warehouses. Report Nigerian officials demanding bribes, Tinumbu tells Qatari investors. Mm. Reps um, ask airlines to refund 14 billion naira COVID-19 funds. Senate summons CBN officials over 30 trillion naira loans. Uh, Tompolo canvasses more crude output. NAF destroys illegal refineries. <laughs> Driver in custody for killing 10-year-old with vehicle. Econians as Obasan Jade Doi Adeoju envoy grace the punch 50th anniversary dinner. Okay, which story? Okay, so um, the um, deadline to link in your NIN to your SIM card expired on over the weekend, and of course, the number has gone up. Yeah. They have over 40 million telephone lines numbered from the telecommunications operators, and <coughs> the numbers have got, um, increased from 28 million with 12, additional 12 million who failed to respond. So if you're experiencing it, you know what to do. Yeah, I have a sad story here. 69-year-old commercial bus driver Waidi Sahid is now in police custody for allegedly crushing a 10-year-old mm -hmm. identified as Chukudi to death at a Gomu Mile 2 expressway in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. And they said the accident um, happened at um, 8.30 a.m. Uh, yesterday. It said the driver of the commercial bus was speeding and so the, there was this father and his son who were uh, standing at the Corvettes. They were you know, planning to go to church when he ran into the young boy and crushed him to death immediately, he said his skull was you know, scattered all over the floor. And while the police uh, men came to you know, evacuate the poor boy, some uh, miscreants around the area started attacking them. They had to get extra help to help um, be able to evacuate the boy and take the boy to um, the mortuary. The cops is in the mortuary right now. The vehicle has been you know, taken by the police and the man in question, the driver in question, has been arrested and investigations are ongoing. It's just a very sad story. Said another one also happened at um, Palm Grove area where uh, a five year old boy, too, was crushed by a BRT bus as well. Okay, so let me take, let's see how much time we have. Uh, okay, let's go on a short break. When we come back, we continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 